What's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? This Crosstown Slim Truman. First off, I want to just say thank you for supporting me in so many ways, from my YouTube to my Facebook, from my artists, from the conglomerate, from different various Dirty Work ENT and everything that I've been involved in. I just want to thank y'all, Muncie, for supporting me and backing me in my club footage. Thank y'all for being willing participants in my videotaping of the clubs, the parties, events. Um, I just want to update everybody from, um, you know, everybody who's been on my Facebook knows that it's a drastic change going on in my life right now. Um, something happened to me. I prayed for it and I asked for it. That night of the Curtis Blow came to Muncie on that My City's Gospel. By the way, you can pick up your copy of the DVD of My City's Gospel's concert uh, featuring Curtis Blow on December 18th. You can pick up that copy from uh, Pastor Mitchell. And you can get that from uh, Brother Johnny Strong, who takes the pictures, Picture Man, Mushy Strong, or you can get them from myself. And um, for those who participated in the acts, various people, um, Jasmine Elliott, number uh, one I can think of, um, uh, Akel uh, Johnson really killed that, Curtis Blow killed that, uh, Brian Rees, um, um, uh, um, Lacey. Um, just so many people, I, I'm not going to say, but you want to get that DVD. My point is that that night uh, really had a major influential change. And don't let me forget Ghetto Preacher and um, Mr. Testimony, um, uh, B, uh, B or Messenger, B Messenger, whatever. Uh, just so many different people. My point is that night really had a major Im 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 effect on me. And I, I asked before the show that God would let me hear or experience or feel something that night and it was just a random idle thought I wasn't really expecting it like that to be that to bombard me and overwhelm me like the when brother Curtis Blow was speaking and praying and for yo those that watch the DVD you'll hear me in the background you'll see the camera going crazy because I'm I'm so busy listening to what he's saying man because I, I, I can't lie I was desperate I was desperate because it, it, nothing was working for me. Everything I tried to do, it was working. It would be a little successful or whatnot. But the downside wouldn't be worth it. The, 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 if I lose one person to hate or something like that because of what I do, then it makes the whole movement uh, tainted. It's like if I lost the sheep, it's like the Bible. If you lost one of your sheep, would you leave the whole flock to go save that one? That's how I feel about my friends, fans, following. That's how I feel about my people is what I'm going to call it. If I lose one person because of the little fame or little whatever it is, it ain't worth it. I'd rather have the friend, which it arguably wasn't a friend anyway. Couldn't have been if your success makes a man. But that's neither here nor there. The point is I had to go back and... Um, I was desperate, and I prayed for God to show me a new angle, a new direction, a new way. And I was watching that brother Curtis blow, and all I could think is, that's it. That's 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 it right there. Because this man filled up this building, filled up this church more than he, than, than, than any rapper I could have brought. He filled up this building, and he had them on their feet and, and and participating and feeling it. And then at the end of the day, everybody walked away with something that's lasting. Here it is, a couple weeks later, three weeks later, and I'm still feeling it. The effects. You see it all over my uh, Facebook wall. So, yeah, God's having a major effect on my life right now. And it's just like since that day, so many opportunities have presented themselves to me. Just, as, just like I said, it's floodgate, like floodgates of blessings have just been opened up. It's like everywhere, every time my phone rings, I ain't shocked that if somebody said, hey, what, what would you charge to do this, this, and this? for this occasion or this affair what is it what would you I just had a brother ask me what what he didn't even ask me what what would I charge he asked me what would I think of traveling to a, a function with him and shadowing him with the camera like the, a star you know like I told him that's what I do <laughs> that's what I do like and another thing I want to address um you know I ain't a cheerleader or, um, I hate to be frank and I ain't going to use the word that people use, but I ain't a rider or a jocker or nothing like that. You know, I'm a promoter. And not only a promoter, advertiser, not only an advertiser, but a supporter. 
of Muncie, Indiana, and anything in it, you know, and anything, not just Muncie, Indiana, just humanity, people, period. You know, I've got to get a little bigger than just that local mentality because the, the point that I'm stressing, you ready to make is like for, for the brother L. Plaga, I, 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 I shadowed him. I shadowed him through from when they came to pick me up all the way out of the highway trip and everything. And then when we got to where they went, I shadowed him to meet Project Pat at the hotel to show and everything. The point was it wasn't about me. I, my job that I was hired to do was to capture this man at his element, doing what he does. This was my, this what I was hired to do. Do you get it? This is what I do. I mean, certainly, uh, it's going to be people that I choose to do this for, as whatever reason we do it, that it's going to be somebody disagree. Oh, you shouldn't have did them. You shouldn't have did them. You know, but this is what I do. And my point is, like I did with the brothers from Detroit, I did the same exact recipe. They came and picked me up. I, 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 I videoed it from the moment they scooped me up to traveling. We ventured into a foreign, strange, and sometimes probably scary world for some people. But for me, what it was was extending the hand of camaraderie and networking as opposed to always the fist of antagonism. And I thought it was a major success. I seen a couple comments. I seen a comment or two on Facebook and had a couple encounters with people in the street. But the point is, though, and, but I'm glad that all these things happened, though, because it allowed me to, once again, separate and distinguish myself from the world that I was catering to. Remember, if this is truly only a job, don't let yourself get caught up in it because of how people react to it's like the paparazzi, you know, that their job is to capture pictures. They might not even deal with the, none of the people that they follow around and capture the picture of. And it's somebody who's going, but that's, that's how they earn their living. So, but they have to separate that. You have to separate. I can't risk my life, liberty, or limbs, or my kids not having a father, or being hurt, harmed physically, or something like that. So I had to re-stop and think and evaluate, and I just was at a loss. So I was desperate. I asked God for some help. Help me, show me how I can serve humanity, serve my brother man, whoever he may be. Regardless, race, climb, time, place, regardless of all that. Whether who like him or not, he public enemy. I want to give him his 15 minutes. That's what I do. Instead of letting the haters speak and everybody who don't like you, man, people might have a reason why they don't like this dude who they're trying to convince you, my enemy got to be your enemy. Just if me and you friends, my enemy got to be your enemy. Nah, man. That ain't how I roll. That's how little girls do in second grade. Just because you don't like somebody, if I got to be, if I'm your friend, I can't like them. Nah. That ain't how, how men operate. Men decide based on the integrity, based on your own opinion and feeling that you draw from somebody. That's how I decide who I'm going to deal with or not. Um, the point is, is though that God, I tried going to the bar and the club after that concert and it just didn't have a feel for me. I saw nothing there. I just saw a bunch of aimless, lost, uh, really kind of sad and seeking. I saw the seeking. I saw people seeking something but they wasn't being satisfied. In the clubs. If you look at the footage here later, they wasn't being satisfied. The only thing, the high point of the club is when I show up with the camera. That three minutes right there where they do that thing, but the rest of the night I looked around and people was just standing around. They was they was bored. They was they was it was almost as if like it was zombies. Like people was just a walking dead is what it seemed like. <laughs> Honestly, it was a weird feeling. So I just you know, I packed it up. It was New Year's Eve. I packed it up like this is my last party footage or whatever because that ain't what the people really need. That's old. They've been doing. We've been trying to party our way out of misery. We've been trying to party our way out of poverty. You know, we've been trying to party our way out of things. It ain't, it ain't working. I need, I need something else. God, please help me with something else. And like a ton of bricks, it hit me that You don't serve an alcoholic alcohol for him to get over his sickness. You don't serve a crackhead crack to get over his sickness. You don't serve any other addiction, a gambler, you don't take him to Vegas. And me doing the party footage and the booty shaking and the alcohol pass and the bus passing and the, everything that's going on in the whole party world, me promoting that 
who gains from that besides just the club owner? Bar. Who gains from that? I'm selling alcohol and and, and, and and so I had to really just stop and really think and reevaluate because I I I wasn't even charging much for parties or if I did a party for somebody like fifty bucks or something I wasn't really making a lot and then I was having issues at the parties and different things with just putting myself out there physically publicly around a bunch of drunk people who some of them might not have my best interests at heart that's just kind of really setting myself up so. Uh, my, what I'm getting at is that I probably, I probably won't do the whole party scene footage anymore. I'm trying to find different events that I can get the people in, involved in. Like, the, uh, for instance, um, MC Razor. Man, let me, just on the same journey that I'm on with God right now and the things that he's showing me and leading in my direction and the things that he's sending my way, I gotta, I gotta give it up to MC Razor. This brother like a, a breath of fresh air, like Curtis Blow was. But Curtis Blow was this, this, that in a sense of something outside of my world, something foreign, something I can emulate, I can, I can figure out what he's doing and, and try to put my swag on it and do it, but it's different when you know somebody in your own world doing it. I sat and watched this brother, my MC Razor, man, his energy is contagious. Just listening to him talk was contagious, and then his business sense, his, his the concept of constantly raking in the money, be not because he's money hungry. I was listening to him talk to customers, and it wasn't about their money. He was selling his product. That's what gives him his joy.